Welcome ladies and gentlemen to my new video on where I am going to try and pass off as much game knowledge um, to you guys as possible. I'm going to go over each champion's weaknesses and where you can look to take advantage of them. Uh, I wanted to kind of make a long format of video where you can kind of just passively gain game knowledge when you are necessarily not able to play League. So if you're doing something like doing homework or uh, cooking or something, you can just put this video on, listen in, and uh, hopefully I can help you give you a little bit better understanding of the champions. My name is Lofit. I do educational content content, uh, mostly guide videos, tip videos, and uh, stuff like that. Also opposition reports where I go in detail, like 20-30 minutes for one champion on how to defeat it, so you can check those out as well. Um, I'm always open to feedback and critique on my videos. If you would uh, like to comment down below, I'd love to hear your thoughts, as well as if you want some just kind of tips on how you could improve your overall gameplay, you can link your OPGG, and I will try and help you uh, the best I can. Um, I peaked at Diamond 3 if you want a little bit of uh, just kind of background on me and that's the highest elo I've gotten in so it's not going to be challenger level advice but I should definitely be able to help you guys get out of bronze, silver and gold. I also stream, try and stream every night at 6.30 uh, PST um, in at night time so you can uh, check that out as well. So without further ado let's jump right into uh, the champions and yeah. Alright and just one quick thing before we get into the champions guys. Um, if you have any tips that I didn't cover, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments down below. Obviously, I can't get around to every single tip, every single weakness um, around each champion or else this would literally go hours and hours. So, I'm just trying to do a quick, short, condensed version, but I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. Alright, let's get right into Aatrox. He is a strong lane bully in the early and mid game. Um, he really excels in 1v1 situations. Uh, he has a decent amount of mobility with his E and a good amount of sustain, but his weaknesses are two mobile champions that are able to kind of dance around his Q spell sh uh, skill shot. Something like Fiora is going to be a great example. Um, he struggles uh, with people that buy early healing reduction that are going to reduce the amount of healing he's going to do in his team fights and in laning phase. And um, there's a bit of a trade off here. Uh, sustained damage is going to do really well into Aatrox uh, because. He is um, going to have like kind of large bursts of healing when he throws out his Q abilities. But if you're able to just consistently damage him down, he's not really just going to be able to take a bit of burst and then heal back up. Um, and that will uh, wrap up Aatrox. Next up, we have Ari. So Ari relies a bit uh, on her mid, early and mid game um, power, similar to Aatrox. Uh, she has a decent amount of uh, pick potential, so always respect Fog of War. Um, she is relatively squishy and gankable pre-6, but after 6, she is one of the safest champions out of the mid lane. Um, she can be uh, pretty heavily outranged, though, if you're able to take a long-range champion like uh, Velkaz or uh, Zareth into her. But she can uh, close the distance and get a um, charm on you, so you have to be careful with that. She is a bit mana-hungry early. The, the, one of the best ways to deal with her early lane power is try and... Um, sit at her max Q range and uh, just wait for the Q to come out and uh, dodge and get her to waste the mana. One of the best ways also is to feign a engage and get her to proc her W that is a uh, very limited damage and costs way too much mana for how much she does. So um, look to get that out of her. And next up, uh, another thing you can look to do is to prevent her early game power is that null, uh, null fine magic orb. Um, is going to be really good and then also things like Hex Drinker if you're building an AD and then uh, really prevent that snowball from happening as much as possible with Ari because she relies on that so heavily to be a force in the later stages of the game. Next up, Akali. Being one of those champions that build Gunblade first item like Katarina, she uh, it can be really impacted quite hard with a healing reduction debuff or if you go something like uh, Executioner's Calling or if you go a Morello's, it can really uh, dampen what she is trying to do in team fights. Another way uh, her weakness is going to be is uh, taking AoE damage when she is in her shroud. It's going to be um, pretty bad and then also CC she is still an assassin at heart uh, if you are able to CC her off your teammates That's gonna be a really big weakness um, Obviously as uh, how many ergot games I've played it ergot is an amazing pick into a call I always go start with the Dorn shield then go 
the null magic um, in my runes and uh, rush a uh, executioners and I'm just able to win pretty much any all-in situation against her. Um, also, if you're just running a tank heavy team and you have minimal uh, assassination targets, she is really going to struggle to be playing at a high level. So keep those in mind when you are going up against Akali, the rogue assassin. Next up, we have Alistar. So, one of the things I really like doing and what you should really look to do against Alistar is they're always going to look to proc their first um, relic shield charge. Uh, at level 1. But this is also when Alistar is at his weakness. He has just as easy. Uh, you should be trying to auto attack him as much as possible, especially if you're a range support and your ADC should be looking to punish him as much as possible and he's looking to get that first Rogue Shield charge because he has no way to gap close to you. He has no threat on you at level 1. Um, also, after he uses his combo, he's very uh, useless if you're able to kite him out a little bit and just auto attack him down and punish him for his engages. That's very important. And also, he's not really that tanky of a champion when his ult is down. So, uh, if he overplays his hand, if he goes a little bit too deep, always look to turn on him. Um, if he does not have his alt up or if he looks to engage or if he fails a combo Which is probably the best situation you could possibly hope for against him Always look to punish him as much as possible. He is a very predictable engage in linear play style so um, Stay away from your allies because he can get a huge uh, AoE knock up on a bunch of people if you are not careful So look to play around Alistar in those uh, respects and next up, we have a Mumu. He is extremely weak in the early game. He's one of the weakest early game uh, champions. The very low damage threshold, he relies on uh, just kind of providing a bit of CC for your laner and uh, getting a kill that way. Look to counter jungle him as much as possible. If you run something like Lee Sin, uh, Zin Zhao, or Kindred, you can really punish him in the early game. Do not clump up. He is just looking for those big clumps to uh, get his ult off and to hit multiple people with his Ws and to kind of guarantee a Q. If he's throwing it into a group of people, it's bound to hit one person um, super low damage in the early game and he is quite mana hungry in the early game so if you're able if he's looking for a gank on you in a 1v1 situation or maybe you just killed his laner always look to maybe kite him out a bit and then return damage on him because he's going to be very susceptible to turnarounds if you have a level advantage on him all right now wrap up a mumu next up we have anivia so very mana hunger and hungry in the early game very susceptible to diving and um, kind of uh, diving champions like Talon and Zed and uh, Fizz. Um, and you have to keep in mind with her R, if she actually goes too far away from her R, it stops. So think of it a bit as a tether. If you're able to pressure away from a certain area, you can get her to stop her R. And uh, it has a bit of a cooldown on it. It's not like a one second cooldown. So you can look to take advantage of that. Um, also, mobility is going to do really well to dodge her slow moving skill shot. And then also long range poke is going to be a, a very good way to poke Anivia out of lane as she has relatively low uh, health pool before getting any items. Next up we have Annie, a mid range mage. So that means she's susceptible to long range poke. And then also look to take advantage of her E damage reduction window which is very important with Annie because she's able to um, be actually a little bit tanky when she has her E up. Do not burst into her E. Wait till it's down. It's not the longest duration, so make sure you're bursting that. All right, and she has a lot of burst AoE damage through her ult and her W. So again, it's one of those champions you don't want to clump up. If you're isolated targets, that's going to be the best way to deal with it. If it's a spread out team fight, it's another good way. Um, make sure uh, when Annie's get a little bit better, when you're not in bronze or silver elo, they're going to look to uh, take advantage of you thinking they don't have a stun up and they're going to either E or W when the Q is in midair and then it's going to turn into a stun. So always be careful um, when they are close to the ult or to the uh, stun bar, it, they can always uh, turn it into a stun midair and uh, look for a pick on you that way. So that will wrap up uh, Annie. All right, and let's get right into Ash. She is uh, very squishy, one of the squishiest champions. Um, she really needs items to get going and to have decent uh, dueling potential. Um, one of the easiest things for an assassin or a diver to kill is a lone Ash. Um, you just have to be able to dodge uh, her alt in some respect, or I mean, sometimes you don't even need to. You can kill her before she can get her alt out. Sometimes, so uh, I can't count how many times I've seen an Ash just solo pushing a, a side wave late, mid or late game, and then a Rengar just comes and one shots her. So. Um, that is definitely one of her biggest weakness when she is isolated. Uh, 
Next up, her ult in the early game is a very long cooldown, so look to take advantage of that window of power when it is missing. And then it, she isn't really the highest damage ADC. Uh, she's going to get outscaled by things like Vayne, Jinx, um, uh, Kaisa, and those really hard scaling ADCs. So sometimes the best is to just kind of uh, wait out until the late game. Um, she has very low mobility, obviously, and very support reliant for her um, for her peel. And then also items and abilities like cleanse, like banshees, um, can be really effectful against her because it's going to really take out a major part of her kit in her arrow. Next up, we have Aurelian Soul, and his mobility is. Um, going to be a little bit of a struggle when you're a highly mobile champion, when you're able to get in position where you want to be. Um, that is going to be a, a really a, a sore spot for Aurelian Soul, and he's bursted out quite easily in the early levels before he has gotten any of his defensive items. And even if he's going GLP first item, which some of them do, he's not really going to have any health, so he can be bursted out. Um, champions that also can match Rome, something like Talon and Talia and Twisted Fate, can counter those uh, big roams that Rowan Soul likes to do. Another good thing you can do uh, against Rowan Soul is to interrupt his W. Um, it does have a bit of a cooldown, and that's where a lot of his consistent damage comes from. So interrupting him when his stars are out is going to be a good thing. And then also champions that can keep up with his wave clear, something like uh, Karthus comes to mind, they can just push away so hard, um, can be a, a good way to prevent some of his roams. And that will wrap up Aurelian. So also long range poke is going to work well against Aurelian Soul and also Azir. <laughs> now that we're getting into him, another uh, he's pretty weak pre-6. And before items, he is uh, one of those champions that you can really take advantage of early in mid game because he needs like two or three items to really start um, doing damage in those uh, team fights and then also look to take advantage of um, how he has to reposition um, his soldiers to do consistent damage to you so if you um, are in a lane against him and you have a mobility spell you want to wait until he uses the Q charge to his minions to get his soldiers on top of you and then you want to use your mobility spell because he will not be able to reposition his soldiers for a while and he will not have any auto attacks from them and he will have very little damage all he will be able to do is auto you and then uh, use his um, shield now, next up, he is mid-range, obviously, as I said before, so things like uh, Averis, I think, was a, a classic counterpick into him because you could just um, throw those, like, lethality arrows and do a lot of damage to him, and that will wrap up uh, Azir. Next champion we have up is Bard. Now, he has a very, very easy-to-spot window of power. When he has his Q up, he is one of the hardest trading uh, supports in the game in the early game but he is extremely weak when he does not have his Q up because all he has is a E tunnel and a W speed up that will heal him and uh, enhanced auto attack so if he misses his Q and he's providing you a, uh, a an instance where you can take an all in on him definitely look to take that all in um, he is very squishy early so you can take advantage of that as well particularly when he doesn't have his Q up and also you want to keep wards up in your jungle because you're going to be able to uh, spot a greedy bards that are looking to invade your jungle and get chimes you can get a lot of kills uh, that way and then also um, when he uses his ult in team fights um, sometimes you might want to keep your mobility spells if you're not under a huge amount of threat and if it's beneficial to you to take the invulnerability and uh, dash into his ult because that can also be used uh, as a free zone is for you um, in team fights and then also um, what happens a bit with the roaming support like bard is it's going to provide you with some 2v1 situations where you're able to either tower dive or really pressure the enemy ADC off of farm so look to take advantage of those as well next up we have Mr. Bliss crank. So, in the early game, he's one of those champions uh, that he it, once his Q is down, which is a pretty long cooldown in the early game, he has very little threat. But before he uses it, he has a lot of threat. So look to play it around those windows of power when he throws out his Q. Punish him as much as possible when he misses his Q hook. Poke harass is going to be very important on him because you want to try and get him. Uh, he, he wants to get an all-in on you and you don't want to get an all-in fight against him. So um, how you want to deny that is obviously dodging the Q. But most importantly is if you're able to poke him as much as possible, uh, that is going to put you in a great position where he won't be looking for too many hooks um, he's very skill shot reliant again so you want to pick champions that are mobile something like Ezreal comes to mind that is able to completely negate his Q with the E um, blink next up he is a frontline champion that is looking for picks 
but he is an extremely squishy support. The only ability that he has as a defensive is his passive that's going to provide him a bit of a shield based on his mana. So um, if you have burst potential, you can potentially burst him out if he misses his hook and he's just kind of on the front lines. And then also he has a W, self-slow. After he speeds himself up for a while, he is going to get a slow. So if he's running away, sometimes you can catch him, even when he looks like he's too far out of the way um, because he is going to get a slow out of his W after um, the speed up is done next up we have brand super super cooldown reliant again uh, similar to blitzcrank and bard after they use their abilities you need to look to punish as much as possible because he is virtually useless with his slow auto attacks very little tankiness and uh, very immobile people can uh, divers can just kind of make a a fool out of him sometimes if they're able to dodge out of the way of the stun and just kind of burst him out that is the best way to handle it um very poor duelist in the 1v1 he relies on being able to do aoe damage to your team so sometimes that is the best way to approach him if you're able to find him in an isolated position and he's very mana hungry sometimes it's best if you're an adc is to go a Doran shield to negate any kind of poke and then uh, stay on the max range of his spells and uh, try and bait out as much mana as possible um, as he is pretty useless without it. Next up, Braum. He is very extreme. He, 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 You can harass him out so easily if you're just staying behind minions and you're staying out of his zone of control. He's very reliant on having a decent ADC that follows up with his engages. It's a very predictable all-in where he's looking to W to a minion and throw a Q on top of you for a slow, so um, just be cognizant of that. Outside of his E ability, he is just a support. He is going to be on a support amount of gold. Gold. So he is going to be squishy when he does not have his E up. So look to take advantage of that window. Um, very predictable alt. He's going to be Wing in and throwing it. And it has a, a little bit of a wind up time. So you can always look to dodge to the left or the right of it when he is doing that. And he, the only pick he has is when uh, is denied if you are behind a tank on your team or a minion. And uh, that will wrap up uh, Mr. Brom. All right, let's jump right into Caitlyn. Now, um, she is very reliant on being able to push lanes and <clears throat> um, be a bit of a lane bully and then push down towers. Um, how you can counter this is by having a decent amount of uh, uh, sustain with something like Fleet Footwork and Dorn Shield to kind of live through her uh, Q poke. She is extremely squishy. Um, she relies uh, a bit on her early game power to kind of bridge her mid and late game uh, kind of weakness comparatively to um, things that are going to outscale her like uh, Vayne and Kai'Sa that have a lot of HP percentage scaling. Um, she is uh, a pretty, she really turns on after three items. She has, she has a couple power spikes. She has her BF power spike and then her uh, three item power spike. So th that's kind of when she really shines. Look to take advantage of her weaknesses. If you're playing something like a Storm Razor ADC like Jin, you, you're going to probably want to take all ends against her once you finish that item because she is going to be a lot weaker. Um, let's see what else she has. Uh, so she really relies on being able to win trades by keeping you her on her on the edge of her long auto attack range and not letting you get inside of it to do more consistent damage than what she can provide. So look to take away her uh, range advantage and kind of fight in where she does not want to fight. Next up, we have Camille. Um, so she's weaker in the early game. She has a really expensive build, um, so you can look to take advantage of that. She is a frontline, and she is uh, pretty squishy. She is very reliant on her E skill shot because it gives her auto attack uh, speed bonus if she hits you with it. Um, and it's uh, relatively, if you just are running in a straight line and she's looking to E you, and when, right when she throws out her E, she's going to probably reactivate as quickly as she hits the wall. Just step back. And most of the time, I'd say like 60 or 70% of the time, she's not going to be able to hit that E. Um, she is very, she is pretty much only single target damage. So she's going to have uh, a, a struggle a bit in later game team fights. Um, and then also her shield is adaptive. So if she's hitting someone um, with magic damage uh, as their primary uh, stat, and you are a physical damage dealer. She has literally no defensive ability against you outside of her invulnerability frame uh, with her ult. So look to take advantage of that squishiness. Next up, we have Cassiopeia. Um, so she has a very predictable ult windup um, that can... Uh, it needs to be channeled and then thrown out. And it's dodged by just turning your character around. So as you can... Uh, 
only face her when you have to and <laughs> just turn around when you don't have to, obviously. Uh, next up, she's a mid-range champion, so look to take advantage of her short range. She is very mana-hungry uh, in the early game with her E if you're able to have a lot of sustain. If you're wanting that time warp tonic and the uh, biscuit setup, you can look to uh, just kind of take a trade with her. She's going to dump a shitload of mana and then you're going to be able to regen a bit out and then you're going to have uh, control over the wave. Now, also, this is a really big part that I don't think everyone knows yet is the dead zone with her W. She it has actually been changed that Cassiopeia's W cannot be thrown right on top of her. Um, she has to throw it a bit out in front of her. So if you are someone that can close the distance, you can look to get right on top of her. So she's susceptible to that. Another big no-no is do not dive Cassiopeia. Do not dive Cassiopeia. Her W Miasma is going to slow you down and stop any movement speed. You can't even flash out. And then also, you're going to be going very aggressive, and she's going to she can just look to ult you if you are an auto attack champion. So, uh, do not dive. Take advantage of mid range. Take advantage of how mana hungry she is, and she is very squishy early before she gets any of those health items um, or the shield from the uh, tier. So that will wrap up Cassiopeia, and let's just jump right into where are we? We are on Shogath. Uh, so he is a very telegraphed um, skill shot. Uh, in the queue and what you're he is generally going to be throwing it behind you so if you move unpredictably either forward or to the left or the right it is going to miss you health threat is just insane against this champion can just get worn down so quickly so if you run a champion like brand uh what Vayne, Malzahar, Kaisa, uh, Poppy, all can do a huge amount of damage. He is very easily kited if he is not able to land the rupture on you. And uh, early HP, things like Resolve, things like early HP items like Black Cleaver, if you're going against him in that lane, can be really good to stop some of those true damage uh, kills. I usually, if I'm running Resolve, I usually always run the Chrysalis just to get a bit more health because that's how you uh, counter just flat uh, true damage. And then also uh, super cooldown reliant and they are a bit longer in the early game. Next up we have Corky. Um, so he is really uh, he's really weak early. Um, he, he is not one of the stronger uh, mid laners. Um, he needs items to get going so you can really look to um, take advantage of his how he's going to have to buy a shitload of components. And how his build is just extremely expensive because he's one of those ADCs that have to buy Triforce first compared to something like... Uh, like a storm razor uh, on other people that is going to be a lot cheaper so look to take advantage of your uh when you're completing your first item and he's still sitting on components look to take as many fights as uh, possible he's very mana hungry if he's harassing you a lot he's squishy um trying to end the game before he can get a lot of items is probably why i think that he's fallen out of the meta a bit because uh, people are end, able to end the game before he, he's getting to a bunch of items and he's very susceptible after his slow moving um gap closer of his w he's very squishy and he's relatively uh, he's not the longest range champion so you can look to jump on him then next up we have a champion that a lot of people struggle with and that is Darius. Um, so, a couple of things. Healing reduction is big because he's getting a lot of healing back from his Q. Um, short burst trades is where he's going to struggle. He's going to destroy you in any long sustained battles, um, unless you are a very particular champion. Um, and then the Q circle. Obviously, if you're on the outside of the Q blade, he's going to heal and do a shitload more damage and get a proc of his passive on you or a stack of his bleed. So look to take advantage of uh, any kind of gap quiz your champion might have to get out of that. Um, so he is also really squishy in late game. He has no ability that is giving him more tankiness and he is a frontliner, so he is not really going to be... He, he's going to rely very heavily on just health items like things like Sterix and Black Cleaver or Triforce. So um, he... Also, uh, can be very easily kited out in team fights, so don't look to. The worst thing you can do in team fights is just completely ignore Darius because he has so much damage that uh, <laughs> if you're able to kite him out, it, he's usually uh, pretty useless in the fights. And then also, if it is all possible, save your biggest gap closer to deny uh, the reset of his alts because that's how he really gets going is when he kills someone with his alt. So deny it as much as possible. If he's flashed W Q or W E Q in you, wait until after the E and flash away so he can't get his um, passive to proc. 
And the last one up in this row is Diana. So dodging her Q Crescent Strike is going to be huge because it's going to uh, deny her alt reset and uh, it's going to take away one damage or one of her alt procs and that is going to severely reduce her um, all in potential. Um, she is very susceptible to CC as, CC as she is a, an assassin that is a melee range champion. So she's going to be super squishy and she's going to be on the front line so you can do a lot of damage. Her shield is a generally a short duration but it's very powerful so look to use your burst around it if she's just w'ing when she goes in wait until uh, maybe try and kite her out with a, uh, a movement ability and then look to throw your burst when she has her shield down she is very easily harassed in the early game pre-6 when she is um uh, just trying to farm and then uh, make sure to keep an eye on her passive pockets i think it's every third attack where she's going to do an increased amount of damage so uh Look when you're trying to do all-ins on her. Um, let her do her third proc when she's farming minions and then go all-in. That will be the weakness. That's like right after. It's the same thing as right after Yasuo throws his tornado. That's why he's at his weakest point. Um, also, just kind of a big meta thing is Diana is super good at fighting squishies. But against multiple tanks, she's really going to blunder. Because she has, there's going to be a lot of CC on those tanks. And she's not going to be able to burst them out as well. So that will wrap up Diana. All right, and let's jump right into Dr. Mundo. So, he is very weak pre-6. He is uh, very uh, susceptible to ganks as he has very little mobility, just has a slow with his Q. He is extremely susceptible to health shred um, because he's going to have really high health numbers. So, things like Bran, Malzahar, Vayne, Kaisa, Poppy, all those HP shredders are going to do extremely well into him. Um, you can kite him out um, pretty easily as he does have a big character model. He's easy to hit and he usually just runs in a straight line um, he did get a recent buff where he also reduces magic damage um, when he's taking magic damage this could be either be from your magic sources or from his w so ad champions are going to do pretty well um, into him he has a special bonus against magic so keep that in mind um, he can be bullied a lot in the early game by bruisers one that comes to mind is darius um, his spells cost health in the early game, so you're gonna be able. To, he's gonna be at pretty low health totals if he has to use uh, a lot of his abilities um, to either trade or to uh, to consistently CS. And then one of the biggest things you can do in laning phase, if you are able to bully him out with something like Darius, is blocking his cleavers because a lot of the times um, they fall back when they realize they can't win one v ones is to just um, CS at max range of cleavers. If you have a little bit of sustain, like with something like Doran Shield or Second Wind, you can. Look to just block that and deny even more CS. So that will do it for Mr. Mundo. And next up we have Draven. Um, very uh, reliant on snowballing in the early game. So um, just keep in mind you want to maybe you want to be a little bit more defensive lane um, in the bot lane. Maybe you want to gank that lane a little bit more to make sure the Draven doesn't get ahead. And then next up he has extremely predictable pathing because he has to go to that location to catch his axe or he's going to lose a large amount of damage. Um, you can take away his stacks after er, um, when he is killed and he loses even more than what he used to. So um, if you have a global on Twisted Fate, something like that, or you're a big roamer and you see a lot of stacks on the Draven, it might be beneficial for you to um, go down to that lane. Next up, um, his only self-peel for himself is his E and his W uh, movement speed, so look to take advantage of uh, kind of um, windows where he doesn't have that E. It's a relatively long cooldown, so keep that in mind. And then finally, CC stops his axe catching. If you have a CC spell, look to throw it um, on his way to where his axe is falling. And that will wrap up uh, Draven. <clears throat> And we are moving on to Echo. So, pre-6, he is pretty weak. Um, or not weak. Uh, he, he's very squishy. He can burst them out quite easily. Um, he, he is very strong in the early level. He's one of the stronger, like, level 3s uh, in the game. And then uh, CC's abilities can stop him from ulting. If you root or stun him, he's unable to reactivate his ult and get away. So, um, if he's jumping in, say you do a bit of damage, and then he's probably around, I think, 60% is a good threshold. You throw out your CC and try to throw out all your bursts when he is CC'd and get it before he can alt back. He is a frontline champion, so he's going to be in those really vulnerable situations. Do not let him out 
uh, ploy you with his ult, um, try and kill him in those CC moments. Um, you can kite him out as well if you are able to. Uh, he, he He's going to be running straight at you, and when he does his E, it's going to be uh, straight at you. So you want to throw your skill shots accordingly. Um, he has a very predictable W in laning phase. Um, when you are when he does not have uh, when you don't have vision of him, and you know he's still around, just back up a bit and wait for him to come into vision because you know he's going to throw out his W when he like uh, he makes like a noise and then it, it sounds like a bat, like he hits something. So just make sure to play a, safe around that W. And we are getting next into Elise. Um, she is very squishy. Um, she is extremely reliant on snowballing the early game and uh, taking advantage of her pick potential. So warding is a must. Um, she excels in tower dives and she's going to look for tower dives a lot, particularly in the top lane. So um, if you are jungling against her, uh, make sure to be cognizant of that. Um, she uh, really is going to struggle if there are a bunch of tanks in the front line. So if you're a tank player and you see an Elise, it's usually going to be a decent pick. And to just stay in front of your ADCs, uh, she's going to be really reliant on maybe getting a flank off with her cocoon. So always stay, but try and stay between the Elise and your squishies. Um, yeah, and, and as I said, pick reliant and really relies on vision. Next up, we have another AP jungler in Evan. Evelyn, she is pretty weak. Um, pre six, she's extremely easy to predict uh, where she's going to be th throwing her E from when uh, she's pre six and has no stealth. And then also, there's going to be an indicator that comes up when she uh, charms you. Uh, when the charm hits its full duration, there's going to be a, like a like an arrow that points to her. So if you're a, a skill shot champion, you can throw some CC that way and maybe disrupt her E charm. And then also move. Uh, in a non-predictable way when she has her E up, and that's going to reduce a lot of her damage. Um, as she is a melee champion, she's going to be pretty squishy, and you're going to need to try and kite out, save your movement spell ability after she uses her E, because that's her gap close. And then also a good way to keep tabs on Evelyn is to ward um, uh, jungle camps, because she's going to get out of stealth when she is fighting, so keep that in mind. And next up, we have Mr. Ezreal. Uh, very little damage if he cannot connect his Qs. He is one of the weaker auto attacks um, just in the game based on kind of like his items that he's building. He takes a while to come online. Uh, he needs uh, like his Triforce or like a Sheen and maybe a Murmon or something like that. Uh, he also doesn't scale as hard as other ADCs. So if you're able to delay the game at all, something like a Jinx or a Vayne or a Kai'Sa or a Kog'Ma or any of those really hard scaling uh, ADCs, they're going to perform better in the late, late game than uh, Ezreal. He is very mana hunger, hungry early and he is very useless without mana. So look to take advantage of those. Um, he has extremely low wave clear. So pushing him into tower is going to do wonders. Um, after he uses his arcane shift, he's going to be very squishy. And if he's looking to auto attack, he's going to be at kind of mid range. He doesn't have the longest range attack. And then also a big thing that a lot of ADC players need to look to take advantage of when he has a tier back and you get something like a pickaxe or a BF sword, look to take as many trades as you possibly can on him because you are going to be able to out trade him to a high level because all he came back with is uh, mana and you came back with more damage. All right, and next up is Fiddlesticks. He is a annoyed support, and kind of semi. Sometimes he jungles, but um, I, I'd say I see him a little bit more in support. So he's extremely squishy. That's why some people will even run things like aftershock on him. So at, look to take advantage of that if you're running something like a burst AP mage like Brand or Zyra. You can really uh, look to get kills on him uh, because he has no mobility and he has very low health totals and does not really build uh, tanky at all as he builds AP. Um, warding is the single best thing you can do if you have Baron buff and you're looking to push down mid lane. Make sure you're warding the side parts of the jungle so he can't just get a huge ult onto your backline because that is generally how Fiddlesticks uh, win games. Also with Dark Wind, um, a lot of the damage comes out of the E. Just make sure to not be grouped up with your uh, lane partner um, when you're a support and uh, just kind of spread out. Uh, just in general, it's really not good to uh, be grouped up against Fiddlesticks just because of his alt uh, AoE and uh, his uh, E AoE. Um, next up is CC is really big in the fiddle six because he is uh, squishy and then it stops his Q and uh, he's generally going to be running into mid range and in a predictable way usually just running up running straight for the fear if they're low elo so I'd like to take advantage of that and that will wrap up uh, Mr. Fiddlesticks. 
All right, let's jump right into Fiora. Now, she is a little bit weaker in the early game. She scales like a monster, so you can usually take advantage of her. Uh, she is an extremely expensive build, as most bruisers do. So if you are a different type, if you're not a bruiser and you're able to just kind of work off a of black cleaver, or if you're able to work off an AP item, um, you can look to take advantage of your earlier power spikes than she has. Um, tabbies are going to be really big because she is auto attacking you a lot and then also healing reduction is obviously going to be very big because it's going to reduce the healing from her alt and her vital procs things like bramble vest and ninja tabbies are just going to do wonders for you um, also another big thing you should look to do with Fiora is putting uh, one of his her vitals when she alts you against the wall so she isn't able to get that big heal proc um, and also the all-ins are going to revolve a lot around her repost or her parry if you are throwing your CC ability into it she stuns you so look to bait it out as much as possible um, sometimes uh, the best situ thing to do is uh, if you're able to just out trade her without your CC ability don't even use it just make her hold on to a repose because she's scared that you're going to use your CC if you're able to win that all in without doing the uh, CC interaction look to just just completely ignore it so you don't get stunned and she doesn't do that really big counter uh, turnaround. Also, you can look to kite her in the later game with uh, CC abilities as she is kind of predictable where she's going to be because she is a melee champion. Um, now that will wrap up uh, Fiora and let's get right into Fizz. Fizz is pretty uh, weak in the early 1 and 2. You're able to harass him a lot off the waves. Um, he is really uh, going to struggle a bit against champions that are going to go Zonias and Banshees that take away uh, the pick potential of throwing his ult from uh, the Fog of War and then Zonias can reduce a lot of his burst. Also, tanks are going to uh, provide quite a bit of a struggle for Fizz because they're going to provide CC and a strong front line that he has to get through. Um, the reason why I actually went or got, started going Urgot mid was Fizz because this matchup is so good. You're able to prevent a lot of your burst with his uh, of his burst with your W shield, and then you're also able to um, E uh, pretty predictably where he's going to be because he is a melee champion. And he's looking to CS, so you can look to do those all in trades on him. Um, late game, even if he's pretty fed, he's going to trade one for one a lot of the time if you're able to burst him out after he uses all of his abilities. And he's relatively snowball reliant, so make sure to ward the river and let your teammates know when he's roaming or follow his roams. And then um, it's actually really common to see Fizz players have low CS numbers, so as much as you can deny CS, uh, just try and do that and he will be uh, weaker. Now, um, let's get into Mr. Galio. Uh, he is super mana hungry uh, with his Q. I think they buffed it or nerfed it so it's like 110 mana or something stupid like that. So if you can just get as many Qs out of him as possible as this is usually what he maxes first. And I think uh, the mana costs are just absolutely ridiculous. So try and run him out of mana as quickly as possible. And then he's a melee champion so you can look to harass him with abilities and with auto attacks a lot um all right and let's talk about his w uh, damage reduction window this is going to be a really big uh this is what gives him so much tankiness so do not burst him until he uses this taunt ability uh, it gives him a bit of reduction during the taunt and then after the taunt um so do not use your burst at those times it's similar to warwick's w uh where he uh does kind of the damage reduction and then fears after it next up we have a pretty predictable e he uh, has a bit of a wind up where he goes backwards and then he shoots forward so you just want to move in a uh, either left or right uh, probably not the best idea to move uh, try and move back against that as it has a decent amount of range um, another big thing is 80 champions in the mid lane are going to do really well because his W shield is actually only applied to mana so or to magic damage so things like uh, Fiora are, I think is a classic counter pick into him in the mid lane that I've seen a couple pros do and then things like Aurelia things like Talon things like Urgot can all do pretty well into uh, Mr. Galio and then uh, his ult is interruptible so if you do see him uh, if you ward kind of the side bushes and uh, where he's looking to roam to ult his bot lane you can interrupt it with any um, sort of CC and that will wrap up Galio. Let's go right into Gangplank. Okay, so overall Gangplank has a pretty expensive build as most bruisers do um, so he, he's going to be uh, sitting on a lot of components for a while and you should be looking to take advantage of him early as possible. Um, All-ins are going to usually go your way because he's looking to just poke you down with Q and take an advantageous all-in when you are a super low health 
Um, next up, champions that kill barrels quickly are going to do really well into them. Things like Urgot, they can proc the W really quickly. Things like Lucian, I think is a classic um, counterpick into them that are just able to um, kill those uh, barrels super quick with the double tap. And then just knowing kind of the basic, uh, the circle is going to run out. And if you're a champion with the ranged auto attack, usually you can kill them um, before they do if you have better timing them. And then also, he is extremely susceptible to tower dives early. And if you put a gangplank behind, it will take him so long um, to get uh, kind of into a place where he's useful. So make sure to keep that in mind. And then lastly, with the uh, gangplank, an early ninja tabby can really just stunt his dam his sheen damage. So um, look to go ninja tabbies early. Uh, but even before finishing uh, your item, because this will really cut his uh, poke damage uh, to a significant degree. And then next up, we have Garen. So, um, where Garen is so extremely tanky is his W. So if you're able to proc or get him to use his W damage reduction and CC reduction, um, use your burst afterwards. That's going to be uh, the best way to approach it. Um, you can poke him down a lot as he doesn't really have a gap closer. And uh, if you're a ranged champion... Um, if you keep him in combat, he is not going to be able to get that passive regen, so make sure you, if you can do that, um, to keep him in combat with your poke. Um, CC heavy champions and people that kite are, are going to do really well into Garen as well. And then avoid the bushes, obviously. <laughs> do not face check bushes uh, that are unwarded that Garen is likely to be in. Uh, next up, we have Nar. Nar is pretty weak early. Um, outside of his mega form, um, he's going to have very low health and resistances for being kind of a semi-tank kite fucking abomination <laughs> of a champion. Um, so he, in the early levels, his range actually scales with level. Um, so he's going to have a pretty short um, range. So look to kind of close the distance and get your gap closers and get your CC on him because he's going to be very weak in his um, form. Uh, his mega form is really susceptible to ranged harass and his... Uh, um, range form is very susceptible to a melee champion all inning him. His E jump is on such an insanely long cooldown in the early game. So if he uses that, make sure to uh, use your dash in. If you're something like, uh, I don't know, like a Yasuo or a Aurelia where you have a shorter cooldown dash, um, look to bait out the E and then go um, for a all in. Always keep an eye on the rich bar. This is pretty obvious, but I, I just want to emphasize it. If it's close to going to ultimate, do not clump up and do not go near a wall. And then another big thing that I see a lot of people doing that's a no no if the team fight's likely to break out, don't give him any free rage. Don't be letting him Q and auto you and getting that rage bar up and cheating quickly. Just. <laughs> just try and deny as much rage as, as possible when you're going against Narn. It's uh, a team fight starting to form up. And next up, we have Mr. Gragas. Stay away. Do not be clumped up. He has a lot of AoE abilities with his E and with his Q and with his R. Um, that is going to be a, a pretty poor situation to be in. Um, his E is actually a shorter cooldown, so uh, it's not one of those cooldowns in the early game that like you, you get to take advantage of. Like Nar has a super long one. His, his body slam is actually on a decent cooldown, so um, he's not a true tank in the late game. Uh, no matter how much tank he builds, he's not going to be as tanky as something like Malphite or Maokai, um, so he is not going to be um, the best tank. As he does usually build a little bit of AP or maybe goes an Iceborne Gauntlet, he's going to be susceptible. Um, um, in the late game, um, he is a pretty predictable uh, engage. It's, he just wants to flash EU and then ult you. So just make sure something is in front of you, a tank's in front of you, and make sure to have vision on the side, uh, on the jungle, so he doesn't get a good flank um, body slam on you. And that will wrap up uh, Gregus. All right, and let's jump right into Graves. Now, he is uh, pretty short range um, for an ADC, so you can uh, just attack him from range if possible and then he's extremely susceptible to burst damage um he is pretty good against consistent damage because he's able to get the armor buff from his e and due to his uh, short range he's going to be pretty predictable in where he's going to be so throwing out your burst in a certain situation is going to be beneficial also you just need to stay away from the walls and that's going to reduce his damage output a lot because his q uh second part where it uh, procs again is going to be uh, a lot quicker when you are near a wall um short 
quick trades are going to be good because he's not going to be able to take full advantage of his E stacks. And then he's extremely mana hungry. Uh, if you're able to deny a blue buff or something like that, um, he can really struggle because his Q costs so much mana. All right, and next up we have Hecarim. He is very weak early. Um, he has an expensive build. That's why I don't think he's seen as much pro play as uh, he used to. Is because people are able to attack and counter jungle him um, and uh, do pretty well into him. Um, he doesn't have the highest health uh, clears, um, so you can look to take advantage of. Again, with early counter jungling is going to be very good. Um, also, the being clumped against Hecarim is very poor, so make sure you're not staying against uh, staying in a clump group because he's gonna be able to get an AOE fear and his Q does uh, AOE damage, and then also his W is going to. Uh, do the AOE damage as small as it is. Uh, slows reduced uh, his AD. His uh, W is going to do a heal field. So if you're inside of the W, it's going to provide him he healing. Uh, do not allow him to get behind you when he is ganking because he will push you back. So if you have any kind of gap closer, um, just try and stay in front of him as much as possible. I know he's very quick, but if you're able to take certain angles where you don't allow him to get behind you and he, maybe he just pushes you to the side, sometimes that's going to be the difference between life and death. And exhaust is just a, just destroys his damage because it slows and that's going to fuck with his passive and then also the just base damage reduction and that will rack up, wrap up Hecker. Next up we have Heimerdinger. Uh, the center of his grenade is the part that stuns so if you're able to get on just the outside of the reticule it actually will only slow you. Um, his ult turret can be smited <laughs> as it is just a, a we if you're able to push the lane extremely hard I know only some champions can push harder than Heimerdinger. Uh, the minions will actually aggro on the towers and kill the uh, turrets for you. Um, so that's going to be good. Don't cluster up. He has a lot of AOE damage. Um, he's very susceptible to high burst combos. Now, you really don't want to get baited in. Um, if you miss any part of your combo, do not be, win, go in because he will win with a lot of consistent damage from his turrets. But if there's something like Fizz and you're able to just burst him out and he doesn't have a stopwatch or his own is up, that can be a viable strategy. Um, he doesn't have the lo longest range, so you can look to poke him and his towers, and that's going to be pretty uh, effective. Um, also, do not gank Heimerdinger if you're a low health jungler with not the best uh, clearing uh, speed and uh, you're at low health. That's going to just really play into his hands because he can just uh, stun you off him and uh, burst you out. And that will wrap up uh, Heimerdinger. Next up, we have Alawi. Um her E cooldown in the early game before she gets any items is huge and uh, she relies on a lot of that damage so if you're something like a Darius or a Fiora with a good amount of consistent damage and she misses her E look to go on her that's going to be when she is at her weakest. Um, going to kill a tentacle is also a really easy way to bait out an E cooldown because uh, she's obviously going to want to throw that to protect her tentacle. Um, healing reduction is going to be very big because she gets a lot of healing off of her Qs. Um, CC and burst is going to do wonders against her. Uh, this is, that's why she usually builds so much anti-burst after her Black Cleaver with something like a Death's Dance or a Steric. So look to take advantage of that. Um, when you uh, are proc'd and uh, she kills the uh, vessel of you, just run in a straight line and you won't get hit by any of the tentacles. And the biggest thing that I see a lot of people make mistakes on against Alawi is avoid the 2v1 against her when she's the 1 and you're the 2. Um, when she's level 6 and your jungler is level 5, so your jungler doesn't have the access to the ult, and you go in and you're level 6, there are very few champions that are going to be able to win in this situation, so do not risk it. If she hits her E, back off. If she misses her E at level 6, you have a chance in the 2v1, but just be very careful when she has an E to wail on with her alt up, because she can win most 2v1s in that situation, particularly when your jungler doesn't even have access to his alt. So... Next up, we have Aurelia. Um, so this is, a ch with after the rework, she is extremely reliant on landing her E. So if she misses her E, her damage potential is just going to fall off a bit. And it has a bit of a cooldown on it. So you can look to um, try and uh, uh, look for your all-ins after she misses an E. She's a little bit weaker early. She scales pretty well. Um, she has an extremely expensive build, so you can take advantage of her in the early game if you get an early power spiking item that... Uh, you should look to take advantage of that spike when she's just sitting on components for her Triforce. Um, her W is a very burst uh, resistant uh, ability, so look to um, just kind of do a bit of damage and bait out that W before you throw out your burst because that is going to really stunt your combo if she's able to W it off. Um, stay away from near, uh, n like low health 
um, minions because what she's going to be able to do is uh, dash to that minion, kill it with her Q, and then get an easier target and get closer to you with her E. So make sure you're staying away from those low health minions. And then also, uh, being a bruiser and a fighter, very susceptible to CC. So make sure to look to uh, knock her down with that um, in team fights. And next up, we have Ivern, the Green Father. Um, so he has very low damage potential. So if you have a bit of sustain, if you're something like Alawi or Darius and they're looking for a 2v1 on you, you do have a shot at this. Um, just because he's really not able to provide uh, too much outside of shielding. Um, he's very squishy when his shield is down. He's very C CD reliant as his autos virtually do nothing outside of maybe a little bit of an improvement when he's in bushes. And he gets a little bit of magic damage added on and in the range. Um, he also doesn't have the healthiest clear, so you can look to counter jungle him a bit because he has to sacrifice a lot of uh, HP and mana in the early game when he is doing those clears. And do not let him steal the buff level one. A lot of the time, uh, Ivern's like to uh, just come over to your jungle, um, do his thing on it where it puts a circle and then just smite it right after to get a quick steal. So make sure you're telling your top laner if you're starting bot or your bot lane if you're starting top to ward your jungle so you know if they are if he's doing that early level one cheese strategy that all Iverns do. Next up, we have uh, Janna. So she is very squishy and she is not able to um, sustain anything. She's able to. Um, she has to be proactive with her shielding. So if you're able to fake them out, if you're running at the Janna, say to the left, and you shoot your skill shot to the right, generally uh, in lower elo, they're going to be like, oh god, this guy's running at me, I have to shield myself. And you throw your ability at the ADC, the damage is going to stick. Or something like Soraka could just heal it off. Janna cannot um, stop any damage that's already been done to the champion, so look to take advantage of kind of mind games you can do with her shielding. Um, you can also interrupt her ult uh, when she is healing everyone. That's going to reduce a lot of the healing going out. And there's a bit of an audio cue with the Q, audio cue with her um, tornado ability or her cue, um, where you kind of hear the wind up and when it uh, uh, goes, it's, it's going to be in a pretty predictable path. Where you were when she started her cue is generally where the tornado is going to end up. So just go to a completely different part of the lane. Um, and then also with her ult, uh, it's very. Um, uh, the displace displacement that it provides, it can be used against her and it can be used for her. So if um, you're getting on top of her, if she, you found her in the jungle roaming around with wards and your Kha'Zix or you're some sort of mobile uh, uh, diver, look to get in front of her where she's trying to run to. So if she ults you away, you're going to be going in the path she's trying to go to. So just be cognizant of that and that will wrap up Jenna. All right, and let's jump right into Jarvan. So he is extremely strong early game. He has a good dueling potential, so play around it. Don't give him any early kills because this is when he has the access to his most amount of carry potential. So play careful. Do not look for um, counter jungling if you're playing something into him that uh, isn't the best duelist or if you're playing against him in the top lane. Respect his uh, early game damage. He has a very predictable EQ. He has a very obvious animation when he's looking to do this combo. He throws his hand up in the air where he's tossing his flag. So no to just look to go left or right as he's usually going to throw it behind you. Um, you can use his terrain against him if you're something like Vayne or Graves or uh, Orn. You can even break his ults and uh, um, just make sure you can look to use that. And then also you can flash out of his R damage. You can blink out of his R damage uh, when he is doing it. He yells Demacia really loud so you know when <laughs> you need to flash or get out so make sure to... Uh, take advantage of that and then also he can be knocked back in his Q dash um, animation and let's get right into Jax so Jax has a relatively weak early game very expensive build Triforce and Sterix and the, the Tiamat item is really a shitload of gold more than an AGC more than a mage more than a support more than anything else so look to take advantage of your earlier power spikes where you have more items completed uh, than he does. Next up, he's very reliant on his E to do trades. If you're able to bait this out and back off and then look for another all-in, this is going to be extremely beneficial. You can harass him off minions to deny as much farm as possible because he will scale insanely hard. Um, you excel in short trades, uh, bursty trades against him because he won't have his passive stacked up and um, he's just like kind of the king of uh, consistent damage out of the melee uh, slot. 
Um, next up, be careful of his third auto. A lot of Jaxes, what they like to do is auto minions twice and then jump over to you with the WQ. So keep that in mind. And then also um, get ready uh, with the flash because a lot of the time what Jaxes like to do is extend uh, their E um, with uh, their flash because it's such an important spell to hit on people. So always be really cognizant and get your finger right above the flash key when you see him looking to engage with the E. Even if you feel like you're safe, always like, oh, that Jax isn't even out of range. If he procs his E and he cues to something, be really, really careful and be ready to flash on a moment's notice because that's usually um, how they're looking to engage. Next up, we have Jace. Extreme early game power. Do not allow him to snowball, pick up things like resolve, pick up things that are going to kind of nullify his early game power. Obviously armor is going to be good against him because he's going to be using lethality. Also a big weakness with him is his uh, he's really mana hungry and standing behind minions is going to stop a lot of his poke damage from his Q. Also you can look to take advantage of his uh, changing form. It's not a zero second or one second cooldown, it's six seconds. So if he gets into the melee form to hit minions and you're just getting auto harassed off minions a lot, you can look for an all in there if you're a melee champion. Um, to the sky's Q, you can dash out of the, that damage. It does a shitload of damage. It's one of his highest damage abilities. So look to uh, flash or uh, dash or blink or whatever you have out of that Q damage. And um, you, you don't really need too much for Jace, right? Just, you're going to be facing NA Jaces. They're not going to be able to carry that game too, those games too hard. So next up, Jin. Um, obvious things about him. He, he's an extremely spot right, strong spot right now, but he does have a few um, windows of weakness, and that is when he is reloading right after uh, he uses his uh, crit shot. He has no escapes outside of movement speed. Um, he, he's a little bit mana hungry in the early game, and he has, he's a little bit ability based uh, in the early game for the damage and his pick potential. So, looks to take trades against him when he doesn't have too much mana. And then he has very obvious damage um, cues that are going to tell you, like, hey, you better back off or else you're going to lose this trade really hard. One being the crit shot animation, and then another with like a grenade that's killed three minions and it's coming towards you. Or you have three minions, like your your caster minions are all at low health. Stay the fuck away from those because you're going to take a huge grenade bounce if you uh, don't. All right, and next up we have Jinx. So how you want to look at uh, her Q and her auto attacks is um, her uh, she has relatively short range with her minigun, and then if she's using her rockets on you, it's going to drain her mana. So look to take advantage of those two things if you're a longer auto attack range and she's looking to CS with her minigun force her into using her cannon uh, or her rocket launcher to drain mana um, with auto attack harass um, get used to the W animation she kind of pulls out a gun from her side so if you're watching her um, you can kind of get really used to just dodging to the left or the right it's a really long skill shot so you don't want to move backwards to try and dodge it um, she has a lot of splash damage from her rocket, so make sure to uh, do not group up with your allies. Um, very susceptible to divers, so if you play things like Talon, Zed, Fizz, they can she can really be bursted out quite easily. Um, very weak early, scales really hard, so look to uh, delay her power spike as much as possible. And a lot of her power in link and team fights comes from resets and getting excited, so if at all possible, try and deny as many of those resets as uh, possible. All right, and where were we? Jinx Kaisa. So, weak laning phase. She's uh, she's a relatively uh, weak laning phase. Um, she's one of the strongest ADCs at the moment, but she still, still does have her weaknesses. Um, what you're able to do against her, what a lot of people are starting to do against her, is to take scaling champions against her because she's pretty weak in the early. You can take things like Twitch. You can take things like Kog'Maw. You can take things like Vayne and kind of try and match her in the late game. Um, look to trade around her abilities. A lot of Kaisas, particularly in low elo, are going to use uh, their Q um, to, to CS. So if she uses her Q to CS or push the wave, look to take trades when possible. Um, you can sweep her out her stealth. And her one thing you have to be really careful about when you're um, uh, when you're a split pusher like Jax or Fiora in the sideline is um, she's able to dash to you if you are getting CC'd by the enemy. So um, really try and ward out as much as possible um, kind of around their jungle because she is going to look to turn a 2v1 uh, or a 1v1 in your split push into a 2v1. So be careful of that. And then also she has lower auto range. So look to harass her with uh, lane boys that have a higher range than her. 
And finally, for this role, we have Callista. Now, she has a lower auto attack range that was uh, reduced a bit. Um, she is a mid-game spiking champion, so um, try and deny as many early kills as possible. Play safe, and you generally will outscale her with uh, pretty much any ADC. Um, lockdown is huge against her because her only uh, defensive abilities are her uh, her martial poise, where she's able to hop around, and then getting a uh, ult off from her support and knocking you up. Very squishy, susceptible to divers. Um, Kit actually revolves a lot around the support, so if you're able to find her in a 1v1, you're going to usually win it a lot because she's going to lose a bit of damage off her W, and she's not going to be able to throw in her support for a bit more CC, and that will wrap up uh, Kalista. All right, and let's get right into Karma. Now, um, Karma scales pretty poorly. Uh, if you're able to get into the late game, she is not going to have as high impact. If she's a mid laner, she's not going to have the same damage she used to be in. Her shields also uh, decline over time, so you can sometimes wait them out and they'll lose a lot of their potency if you're looking to burst her out. Um, her uh, level 6 isn't as strong as a lot of other people's level 6 because she doesn't gain access uh, to any new abilities. She's had her ult since level 1, so you can look to take uh, trades once you have that enabled. Um, the best way to position against Karma is to be diagonal. If there is a, a minion wave right here and here, if she's on the left, you want to be on the right and vice versa, right? Um, this is going to make it the hardest uh, possible for her to land her Q on you because she is able to tag minions with her Q and have the splash damage go over to you um, a lot of her uh, survivability depends on her alt w um, and if you go out of range she is going to miss one of the heal procs obviously you can't dodge the instant cast of reverse w alt but if you're able to get out of her second one it takes away a lot of her damage um, she uh, can be pushed in if you have a lot of uh, wave ministry or something like Karthus or Rolian Soul, and then uh, she's going to struggle a little bit under tower um, with CSE, and uh, those are the weaknesses of Karma. Next up, we have Karthus. So, he is extremely susceptible to dives, very squishy um, in the early game, and uh, his only a way to kite people out is with his W slow. Um, also, AoE shields, uh, things like Locket, things like Redemption are really going to stunt uh, Karthus's ability to do a lot of damage in the late game. Um, what you should be doing uh, when Karthus has no mana, he is completely useless. And uh, he's an extremely mana hungry champion, so this is going to happen a lot. Um, <laughs> you don't want to activate his passive because he's going to get uh, the ability to cast out as many spells as he sees fit. Um, so if you just see a low zero mana Karthus running around, just let him run around. Treat him like he's basically as useless as a, uh, as a minion. So uh, <laughs> look to take advantage of that. Uh, next up, Zonia's and invulnerability frames are really useful. You should hold on to those when, uh, if you are able to. Um, for when Karthus is ulting, that's like an E from uh, Fizz or a, um, what else? Like, there's a couple different things that give you an invulnerability frame. And then uh, next up, we have a good car. If you can't dodge the Karthus' cues, if he's just an extremely good Karthus and he's punishing you uh, on every single CS, um, look to t just be near minion so at least he won't take the isolated damage because the isolated damage is going to double how much the Q is doing. So at least be close to a minion and minimize his damage that way. Um, and then it also takes him a while to scale. Uh, he's a late game monster, but he can get snowballed on. If you're able to end the game early, that's going to be a really good um, thing against uh, Karthus. Just as much as possible, stay out of that late game. Next up, we have one of the most overpowered freaking champions in Kassadin. Um, harass him as much early with auto attacks and spells because he does have to um, walk up to minions and auto them to CS unless he wants to use his Q. Um, he's very susceptible to CC because he is a melee range champion and he is going to be a little bit squishy. Obviously, AD damage champions are going to do well into him because his passive is going to be null and void because uh, all it does is reduce magic damage. So if you, if you run things like Talon, uh, Urgot or Zed into the mid lane is going to do uh, okay against Kassadin and deny as much C CS as possible because this thing scales like an absolute monster and also with the, the start of uh, going fleet footwork and then taste of blood secondary it enables him to CS for so much so if you're able to just force him out of lane do that because uh, once he gets going there's not really any stopping uh, Kassadin. 
Next up, we have Katarina. What you want to do is she's very susceptible to getting CC'd when she's ulting. This is a really big weakness of her because she has to stay still to do her ult damage. So always save it um, for then. Obviously, Katarina first item is going to be Gun Blade. So healing reduction is going to be pretty good because she's going to be able to heal a lot. Um, from her AOE abilities and uh, the massive amount of damage she does. Um, she's weak early. Um, look to push her in. Don't stay near minions where she can bounce daggers off of and hit you with them. Um, Zonias can be really effective to uh, reduce a bit of her burst. Uh, I personally... <laughs> Again, I know I know I've been saying this a lot, but I just think Urgot is one of the best pick into AP assassins in the mid lane. I think Urgot's a great pick. A very big weakness of uh, Katarina's is certain counter picks. Things like Diana are going to be really good, where she can shield off the burst from Katarina and then easily interrupt the ult with her uh, E. Uh, stay away from minions, obviously, yes. And if you can deny a snowball on Katarina, she's not going to scale that well. So obviously, vision and pushing her consistently under uh, the tower are going to be uh, your best friends and also pings when she goes missing. And next up we have Kale. So um, she is weak early. Uh, you're able to take advantage of her cooldowns on her E where she goes into her ranged form and uh, she's not going to be able to CS unless she wants to run up and smack them in melee range. If at all possible, uh, save your disengage uh, abilities for when she ults. And then also, she can be CC when she's ulted, so um, look to take advantage of that. And then also, she's going to be running in a very predictable pattern when she's ult because they feel invincible, but they're generally going to be right, running in a straight line at you, so just throw your CS in front of her. Um, generally, uh, she's going to want to push a lane a lot, so uh, tell your jungler, hey, this Kale is going to be pushing all, all lane phase if she wants to CS from ranged. Um, because there's a lot of splash damage, so she's going to be very susceptible to early ganks. And she's just squishy, a squishy champion. If you're able to burst her out before level 6, uh, do it. And uh, that will wrap up Kale. Next up, we have Kane. So how I like to describe Kane is he's about 75% of a champion uh, before his transform, and he's 125% of a champion after the transform. So look to take advantage of his early weakness, treat him like he would a Hecarim, uh, a Mumu, a Zac, and try and counter jungle as much as possible. Um, so with his ult, he's untargetable, but he is not invulnerable. So he still takes damage uh, when he's in an ult. So he'll still be taking like ignite damage. He'll still take a drain damage from a fiddlesticks if it's tethered on or a W from a karma. So look to uh, that. Also, healing reduction against red cane and armor against blue cane because blue cane relies on bursting you out. Uh, so armor is going to be really good against his lethality build. And then healing reduction because there's a lot of sustain built into red cane's kit. Uh, prolong the game if he goes blue cane if possible because uh, he's going to fall off a bit and he's generally going to trade one for one in the late game and end the game as soon as possible push objectives if you see red cane because red cane scales like absolute craziness um and that will wrap up kane next up we have kennen he is a uh, pretty predictable path when he's engaging with his alt um, and he's going to generally just try and run as fast as possible and put his alt on, um, particularly when flanking. Um, he, knockbacks are just insane against him. If you're running something like Syndra, that's such a classic. Um, also, uh, if you're an ADC player, Tristana is an amazing pick into Kennen because you can just save your alt to stop his um, engages. Also, uh, when you're in laning phase against Kennen, if you stand behind minions, it's going to reduce a lot of his Q damage. And every fourth auto, his lightning dagger lights up, and you know that he's going to have an empowered auto, and he's going to look to auto um, W trade on you. So just force him to use that auto on a CS by backing off until he does that. And then lightning rush, his uh, escape and his speed up is a relatively long cooldown. So once he uses that, he is very susceptible. And uh, that will wrap up Kennen. All right, and let's talk about Kazakh. So, um, with his isolate damage of his Q, uh, one of his weaknesses are uh, champions and teams that are going to be uh, relatively close to each other and are looking to peel for each other, so you see people off them, and really deny as much of that damage as possible. Kazix also is pretty squishy. He is going to be in the front lines too, so he's going to be very susceptible to burst. He also has quite a long cooldown on his E, particularly in the early game, so he is going to have very limited mobility when that is down, so look to punish that as much as possible. And he excels in against squishy team comps with no tanks and low cc which is a lot of solo queue that's why you see a lot of kazakhs in solo queue so 
if you're one of those people looking to win and you see a Kazakh locked in on the other team, look for a champion if you can play it in your role. If you're in top jungle or support, if you play a CC heavy tank, you're going to do a lot for your team in denying what Kazakhs is trying to do in team fights. So look to do that. Next up, we have Kindred. Um, usually the team that is more organized, um, whether against or on Kindred's team, is going to win the game because those marks are so, so important for his kit and really enables... Um, him so much or denies him a lot if he doesn't get any marks so try and coordinate with your team either to deny scuttle um, marks or play safe when the kindred has you marked he is hyper squishy and very low range early so take advantage of that if you have burst and also he cannot ult when he is cc'd so if you have a high burst potential if you're something like a syndra you can look to get a lot of early kills on him uh, with a mix of cc and burst displacements are absolutely insane against kindred in his ult because generally they're not going to be kiting too much around the ult because they feel invincible but if you have something like an ergot where you're able to pull him out if you're able to knock them out with the lee sin kick if you're able to knock them out with the gragas all all of these are going to be very big also something like janna whether you're on the team or against the team if you knock those people out of the ult and then keep healing up the people inside the ult is going to be huge um he has great, great dueling potential early. Do not engage unless you know you can win um, because he can chase you down and kite you out really hard with the uh, with the red buff. So make sure if you're something like a Xin Zhao, if you're at the right amount of damage, obviously go in and kill him. But if you're not 100% sure, um, you can get punished extremely hard by his chase down with his short cooldown on his Qs and his slow from his E and the red buff. Um, really provides Kindred with a decent uh, early game. So that will wrap up Kindred. Let's get right into Kled. Um, make sure to not engage him in the lane um, because he does not have a choice of when he uses his W proc. Uh, make sure he uses that on the minions and this will allow you to get better trades on him. Also, ward in rivers to stop the roams uh, from the Kled because generally he'll just walk down the river um, when he's looking for an alt. And uh, kind of throw up behind your mid laners. So make sure you're letting your team know when uh, the Kled goes missing. And that's going to be rather big. Also, if you have burst, you want to save it for when he's dismounted. Because he's, he can remount. But if you're able to burst before he can um, get enough of his charge to remount back. That is going to be the most beneficial. Um, a lot of his doing potential comes from his abilities. He doesn't have the best just kind of like consistent auto attacks outside of his uh, W enhancement. So a lot of Kleds are actually using their Q ability to just kind of farm and push waves. So after he uses his W on a minion, um, because it's kind of auto enabled when the cooldown is up, and then using his Q to push the lane, that is the most ideal time to engage him, because all he's going to have is his autos and uh, his ease. Um, also, he is very susceptible to being kited when he is dismounted. He is slower um, and he has to auto something or cue something uh, to get back on his mount. So just kind of denying those autos and whether your ignite is running on him, if you're running ignite in the top lane or your, the minions are aggroed on him, it, that is going to be a beneficial spot to just kite him out. That will wrap up uh, Kled. Next up, we have Kogma. So, relatively weak early game, very susceptible to ganks. Um, you can get away with pretty much any ADC into him. So, if you see a Kogma and you're an amazing Vayne player, or Jinx player, you can get away with those kind of champions in the lane phase. Um, very susceptible to dives. Things like Lee Sin, things like Fizz, things like Zed, things like Talon are all going to be very good. Uh, next up, uh, in a late game front to back team fight, Kogma is one of the best ADCs. Um, because of his ability to shred tanks with mixed damage. Um, so really do not try and play th that type of game into the Kog'Maw. Um, uh, what you can do against Kog'Maw in lane to limit his CS as much as possible is take AP Mages if you're the support or take something like Caitlyn to harass him and deny as much CS as possible because he's one of the hardest scaling champions with uh, gold. So deny that as much as possible and that's one of his bigness biggest weaknesses. Next up, we have LeBlanc. She is very reliant on snowballing the early and mid game. Um, she uh, really isn't the best late game mage because of her relatively short lane range and how squishy she is. Shields are huge against her. I almost always take Null Magic uh, 
uh, like the orb that gives you a little bit of magic uh, damage uh, shield. That's going to be a lot because she doesn't have the most uh, consistent damage. Um, she's very bursty, so uh, sometimes that leaves her just kind of auto attacking you uh, with the minimal health while you get away. So I, I've saved a lot of. Uh, given up a lot less deaths than once I started using that. Also things like Hex Drinker are going to be very good because she has low consistent damage. Um, <clears throat> she's very, very squishy uh, as well and um, she's very predictable in her movement patterns, particularly with low elo LeBlancs. Once they W in, they're going to stay in that spot for a while. They're not generally going to move too much, so just throwing your abilities right at her is going to uh, be very beneficial. Um, she's very susceptible to CC because, again, she's going to be in pretty predictable spots and you're able to burst her out quite hard. And then obviously staying behind minions is going to be good because of her chains cannot go through the minions and that is how she is able to CC you. Next up we have Lee Sin. So he is a very strong early game champion. Obviously you do not want to be pushing your lanes out too much when you don't. Uh, really know where he is. Um, he transitions pretty poorly into the late game unless there are talented Lee Sin that can get great engages with insects. Um, play safe. He's a great counter jungler. Make sure you're warding as much as possible and taking um, the buffs into the bushes and uh, kind of denying that kind of vision and being the first to see when he's coming. Uh, you really don't want to group up because he's able to do a good AoE damage with his E and then he's also able to kick the high HP target into the squishier targets and do a lot of damage. Um, when he is looking to insect you, uh, try and save your dash for when he Ws and tries to ward hop behind you. That is usually when you want to use your uh, mobility. Um, an early piece of armor, whether you're like a mid lane going, uh, maybe going a, uh, what, like a Seeker's Arm Guard can be big, or going a Ninja's Tabby in the top, or, or the mid lane, and just kind of denying a bit of his snowball potential can be very big. If you deny him a kill or two in the early game and he doesn't get that snowball going, he's going to be very poor going into the late game. So that will wrap up uh, Mr. Lisa. Now we have last in the row, Leona. A very good uh, low elo support. She's very CD reliant and you can punish her extremely hard when her gap closer is down over E, you should look at it. Uh, similar to Blitzcrank's Q, when it's down, she has very little threat, so look to punish as much as possible. If the AD doesn't follow up with her EQ combo, punish her as hard as possible, because she's going to be able to not really kill your ADC straight out, and uh, she's going to be generally running away, so get as many auto attacks on her as possible. Don't clump up, because she has that AoE stun, and that's going to be very easy for her to land an EQ on someone if, she, if there is a clump of enemies. Uh, stand between her and the carries if you are a tank because you will eat the E charge. He doesn't get a choose. Uh, it's not a point and click. So make sure you are peeling for your squishies if you are one of the frontliners. And she is not a true tank. Squishy. She is squishy in the later game. Usually they go mobility boots too. So they're not going to have like a ninja tabby or a merc treads and they can be bursted out late. Uh, particularly when she has her W eclipse down that provides her uh, additional uh, resistances. You can really heavily burst her out because generally she's going to be not going. The true tank items is kind of the support tanky item. So that is when she is uh, pretty weak. All right, let's jump right into Lissandra. Now, she is a relatively weak champion in the later game and thrives in uh, situations in the early and mid game where she's able to use her ult for pick. Um, so make sure to be cognizant of that. Um, very squishy, relies on being close for engages a lot of the time to kind of use her E in and then W root Q alt. A mid-range mage that um, can be poked out in the laning phase if you're able to take a longer range champion into it. Um, Hyper-reliant champion on ult. When that ult is down and it's really on cooldown in the early game, she is very uh, minimal damage. Stay away from minions. Um, this will make her choose from pushing the wave with her Q and doing a lot of damage to those backline minions or harassing you. There's nothing a, more than a Lissandra wants is being able to throw a Q through a wave and also um, hit you. Um, what else do we got here? Um, the biggest thing you can do to screw with a Lissandra is to disable her, silence her, knock her up, or stun, or do anything you possibly can um, to stop her from pressing or using her abilities after she's thrown out her E because she wants to escape or go in generally when she's uh, throwing out that E. 
um, and that's a pretty long cooldown as well. So if you're able to interrupt her E, it's going to be a very big way to negate a lot of her uh, all-in potential and her escape potential. Um, the root is actually a pretty long cooldown as well, so if you're able to bait that out and you're a melee champion, look for the all-ins after that because that root is really, really long. And if she's using it to CS or push the wave, look to punish as much as possible. And that will wrap up uh, Lissandra. Next up, we have Lucian. So, he's a weaker... A uh, champion in the late game, but really excels in early and mid game uh, dueling. He needs to use his double tap, which is his uh, auto attacks um, that kind of go very quickly after he uses his ability um, to reduce his E cooldown. So if you're able to, to deny um, the uh, the double tap usage, uh, it's going to take him a long time to be able to dash again. He is shorter range, so you're able to take advantage of, uh, if you're able to burst him out, um, you definitely do so. If you're able to pick champions like Ryze or Vagar that can really punish someone that's getting up close and personal, that's going to be very effective. Um, when you're in uh, laning phase against him, make him choose, again, similar to Lissandra, uh, make him choose uh, by pushing the wave with this Q or attacking you with this Q. Don't let him shoot the Q through the minions and also uh, hit you. Also, he cannot change the aim when he is using his coin. He's not able to turn it around and start doing it behind him or to the left or the right of him. He's only able to dash um, kind of in, in a way left to right to kind of reposition it a little bit. Um, but yeah, make sure to uh, use it. Save your dash for when he is looking to ult you because you're able to negate a lot of damage with mobility when he is using his ult. And obviously, he's going to get outskilled by a lot of hyper carries like Kaisa, Vayne, and uh, Kogma. So sometimes the best thing you can do is just kind of prolong the game um, with him. And next up, we have Lula <laughs> Master 7 on her. Okay. <laughs> Um, so she is very squishy in the early game. She has a low um, uh, kind of a health pool. Uh, be very careful of alt baits. That's what I love doing when I played Lulu. Is when I saw someone coming in and I had a low health guy running away, but uh, there were a couple people coming. I would make sure they used their mobility into him, and then I would alt and then give them a knock up, and it would really put get them in a bad position. So be very careful if Lulu has her alt up. Next up. Um, the creeps will actually block, and then also uh, allied champions will also block uh, the picks damage, which is the enhanced auto attack that Lulu has. So if you're looking to trade against her, and even if it's like supportal combat, if you hide behind a minion and auto her, she will get a lot less damage out of her autos if you are putting something between you two. Um, watch out for the picks also being placed on the minion um, if she's able to Q harass you. Um, if she puts an E on a minion, um, friendly, or uh, or uh, if it's an enemy minion, and uh, she's able to throw her Q out from her pick. So be very careful. It's an expensive way um, to get some auto some Q harass down, but it can be done. It can really extend the range. Um, if you're able to force her alt on herself, uh, just kind of with AoE damage, that's going to be huge. Um, that's probably the most, uh, the, the, a way where you can negate Lulu a lot is by forcing the ult out on her and not on like a hyper carry that's going to really need it in the team fight. And that will wrap up Lulu. Next up, we have Lux. Uh, she is a pretty mobile squishy champion. Um, she is extremely ability reliant, so look to play around it a lot of the time. She's going to be throwing out her E's to just kind of harass or to push the wave. So look for engages after her E is down. Um, next up, you really have to respect the fog uh, with Lux. This is how so many Lux players get really adept and they climb because they're able to um, just take advantage of the fog, whether it's uh, in the bushes with control wards. Make sure you're warding as much as possible and face check as... <laughs> as uh <laughs> as little as possible i know that's hard when you're a low elo player um deny auto trades within her passive is procced on you because she's going to be able to do a lot of damage in those trades um the passive is procced on you when uh, she had just recently hit you with an ability so uh, maybe she puts an e harass on you and then you you don't really want to walk up and just give her a free uh passive proc um a really dumb thing you can do in lane <laughs> that uh, you really need to stop doing that I see this quite a bit is following Lux into fog of war when she's running to her jungler and she's just able to turn and do a full combo on you be very very careful um, a big thing uh, that a lot of Lux players like to do as well is uh, chasing getting you to chase them under towers I haven't 
can't count how many times I've seen people or my jungler chase a Lux under tower, gets rooted, and then she's able to use her W shield, which has pretty high values in the early game, and then also a barrier and just bait you under tower. So be very, very careful with following Lux under the tower. Make sure you have enough burst and you have a mobility spell to dodge her uh, root or be very, very uh, aware that you need to dodge as soon as possible uh, when she throws out her root when you are under the tower. And that will wrap up Lux. Let's go right into Malphite. So Malphite is weaker earlier. He is very, very mana hungry in the early game, particularly when he's just looking to Q harass you. Um, things like Second Wind and uh, Doran's Shield can be great to kind of outlive uh, his mana pool. Um, he's going to be weaker in the all in general earlier. And uh, you really need to spread out away from your carries because his ult is really maximized when you're clumped up. Um, uh, when you are looking to fight him in a 1v1 in the top lane, he has a very large attack speed slow. So look to either disengage after he uses the clap or um, uh, just kind of avoid it. You don't want to take an all-in after it because he's going to be able to beat you in most situations unless you're like something like Darius or Fiora where your whole kit is built around killing tanks. And try and keep his shield down. Um, if you keep him in combat, he's not able to get his shield back up. And uh, it's really when he wants to take trades is just kind of like Q, W, E, uh, use his shield and then back out and then rinse and repeat. So make sure to try and do uh, consistent fights against him when his shield is down. And that will wrap up Malphite. Obviously things with Shred like Black Cleaver and percentage health damage are going to be work wonders against Malphite as well as uh, mobile champions that can dash out of his ult. Next up we have Malzahar. Extremely, extremely susceptible pre-6, um, relatively weak, extremely mana hungry. If you're able to push him off uh, a wave um, when he has an E up, it's going to be very effective because he's going to be unable to kill that minion um, with the E charge on it and he's not going to get the mana refund of killing a minion with the E up. Next up, killing the Voidlings is going to be a great way to stop his push and getting you under tower and denying UCS. So whenever you see those Voidlings come out, if you have any sort of AoE spell, throw it right at them. Um, <laughs> If you're playing something like Vagar, that's like a fucking dream. You're able to stack off of them. And then also they give a little bit of gold, so you never forget that. Um, also, he's a mid-range mage, so things that are long-range can really punish. And then the obvious weakness, uh, where you can just kind of cancel out his kit with like a Gangplank W or a QSS, anything that removes uh, suppressions. So that will wrap up uh, Malzahar. And let's get on to the last one of the video in Malkai. Um, healing reduction is actually going to be pretty effective against Maokai because he is able to get a lot of healing back in consistent trades um, from his uh, passive where he gets like 6 or 7% health back after when he autos you. Um, if you have uh, a lot of movement speed or you have a, a dash ability, it's pretty easy to get away from his slow moving alt. Stay away from bushes. Obviously, he's going to be throwing saplings in there and they're going to do a lot more damage and uh, scale up when they are uh, coming out of the bushes. Um, do not use, this is the biggest one for Maokai, do not use large cooldown abilities until he uses his Twisted Advance because the biggest amount of outplay comes when he's able to go invulnerable when you're throwing out a large impact ability that is a uh, skill shot or even a targeted ability. Um, one big thing you can do against Maokai, we'll wrap it up with this tip. Um, one of his weaknesses is he can't stop his Twisted Advance once he's used it. Um, you can dash under the tower or flash under the tower if you have a guaranteed kill. And he's going to have to, if he wants to trade on you after that, it's going to be very bad. Uh, because he's going to be taking tower shots and you're able to really put him in a poor position. So... That will wrap up the video. I'm stopping about halfway through. There's about 10 rows of champions here, and this was the 10th row. So the next video, we're going to be going from Master Yi all the way down to Zyra. I hope you uh, enjoyed the content. I know this video is extremely long, but I wanted to make a video that's a bit longer that you can just kind of uh, listen to in the background. If you enjoyed the content, please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, guys, take it easy.